Okay, so for ME304 uh, from the Shigley book again, uh, we have this problem. So determine the deflection of the carbon steel shaft shown below at its mid span, this line, using Castigliano's theorem. Uh, since the loading is symmetric, perform the required integration only half of the length and then multiply the result by 2. So that's a little bit of a shortcut. Uh, normally, Castigliano's theorem is usually a little bit hairy, but uh, since it's a symmetric system, it makes it a whole lot easier. Okay, so starting out here, uh, let's just go ahead and get an FBD, a uh, two body diagram drawn here. So, what we have, going like this, like that, is the thing, pretty easy. Um, most of you should know how to do this already. We have a reaction right here, a reaction right there. Uh, R A R B, and with Castigliano's, uh, oh, sorry. Uh, with Castigliano's theorem, you always need a fictitious force. And we're going to put it right in the middle where we're interested. So, Q. The fictitious force is always going to be a spot where that you're interested in finding the deflection. <laughs> okay. So, with that being said, that's pretty easy. I'm going to go ahead and write in that this is 10 inches right here because that's going to be important. Uh, 4 inches, 6 inches, just like that. Uh, just for us to know. And split it down the middle. We've still got this uh, distributed load going on up here, just like that. Okay, so from uh, using from symmetry, basically, a real you, you could do uh, some of the forces if you wanted to, but you know that uh, R A and R B, since they're I, gonna, they're each going to support half of the total load, so R A is going to equal force of Q plus the distributed load, two hundred. Uh, LB per inches, uh, pound per inch, all 12, times 12 inches, which is the length of this fat part. Let's even that up a little bit, that's bothering me. Um, into that fat part, all over 2. So divide, divide the total downward force by 2, and you have one half of the total reaction force that's pushing back on. So that's going to equal Q over 2 plus 1200 pounds. Huh. Okay, so now moving right it on into Castigliano's theorem. Since it's going to be a bending system right here, we don't have any axial forces that we're working with. It's only the bending moment. We're going to go ahead and use the Castigliano's bending diagram at x equal to 10. We want to find the displacement at x equal to 10. So to do that, we're going to take the integral from 0 to 10 inches of 1 over e i times the moment, times the partial of the moment with respect to Q. Uh, uh, with respect to X. And then we multiply that by 2, because from 0 to 10, you only get half of this spire up here. But we, since we want all of it, we're going to multiply it by 2, and that's what the hit was for. So this is our primary equation right here. And now we just have to break it down a little bit more because since we have this change in geometry between this little skinny rod and then the fatter rod, uh, we have to split this into two parts. So, going ahead and starting with the small part first, uh, we're going to write another, draw another FDD. Uh, we have the reaction A here, and then we have a moment. We call it M1 at X. <coughs> okay, so this is for X less than or equal to 4, but greater than or equal to 0, just like that. And then, let's see here. So we know that this is equal to 1,200 plus Q over 2. Right there, I hope you can see that. I hope it's fairly clear. And then, so the moment, the moment 1 at X is going to equal 1,200 X plus Q x over 2. And that's the same as just if this is the distance x, just like this. It's multiplying this by x, which is the moment. So, pretty easy little quick translation you can do right there. If you want to lay out the whole sum of the forces, that's fine, but I just like to take the shortcut just because I know what it's going to be. Alright, so that's our uh, main equation for the first four inches. And now, moving on to the next chunk. Now we include this little short piece, but then we move off into the fat part. And I'm going to make it look like it's cut right there, so we remember what's going on. So we've got the distributed load, distributed load, distributed load. Uh, the reaction is still 1,200. 
plus q over 2. Uh, we've got a distance x here going like this, which goes up to here, back to here. I'm going to draw a narrow. Distance x. Okay. And, okay, this is 4 inches. Just make sure we know that. And then we have a moment here again. Because, of course, we've, even though we're ignoring this other half, we know that it's inducing a moment on this chunk, so we have to realize that, or recognize that. So the moment at 2 of x, okay, so we made sure that you know, I was looking ahead a little bit of what we're going to be doing next. Okay, so then from this, we know the moment 2 at x is equal to 1200 x plus qx over 2. So again, the moment is the same as this moment right here when you're doing some of the moment. But then we also have this distributed load, which brings into a moment. I'm going to screw that out and get in the way. Okay, so then, and then for the distributed load, it's going opposite to what these moments are creating. So if we're taking the moment about x, which is right here, uh, <coughs> um, all right, uh, so, no, we're, yes. uh, so, minus 200 times x minus 4, x minus 4 over 2. So this is the distributed load uh, minus this little chunk right here because it's not a distributed load across the whole direction. It's this x minus this 4 inches. So we know how long the load is. And then since any distributed load can be remodeled as a single force right in the center of where the distributed load is acting, this is x minus 4 divided by 2, which is the lo location of that load. <laughs> so that gives us the moment that we need. Alrighty. <coughs> So the final answer here is 1200x plus qx over 2 minus 100x minus 4 squared. So that's our second equation for Castilian loss theorem. M2 of x. There we go. <laughs> Alright, so moving on to the next little part of the study. Now that we have those equations, we're able to go back and start doing this integral along this interval. So this is from x greater than or equal to 4, less than or equal to 10. So, coming on here and actually doing the integral, what we're going to do is we're going to take Castiglione's theorem, I'm going to write it out again, equal to 10, equal to 2 integral from 0 to 10, 1 over e i of the moment moment equations that we've gained up here, which is these. And then take the partial of the moment times the partial of the derivatives with respect to Q, because Q, remember, is a fictitious force. And then the X. So, going like that and expanding it out to the two separate situations that we had up there a little earlier, we have... We have... Sort out the E e over 1 over i, because e is the material property that's constant between the, uh, both chunks of this part, even though they get fatter or thinner, it's still carbon steel. So the integral from 0 to 4 of m1, partial of m1 over delta q, uh, over, over the partial of q, dx, plus 1 over i2, I1, integral from, oops, not 0, 4 to 10, of m2 of partial of m2 over partial of q dx. So that's the Castiglione theorem expanded out to include uh, both sections that we want, and this is, a, is equal to the displacement. Okay, so. But the partial of m with respect to q, if we take this equation and take the partial with respect to q, everything else is going to cancel out because we don't care about the x's. So the partial of m2 over the partial of q is equal to x over 2. And the partial of m1 with respect to delta q, like up here, again, the partial with respect to q is going to be x over 2 again. x over 2. 
So then summing those values into this equation up here, I'm writing big so you can see it on the camera. It does make it harder moving back and forth between this work. This work. So 2 over B of 1 over I1, then we roll from 0 to 4 of 1200X, which is the moment about 1. <laughs> when, uh, okay, another note. M1, this is with Q equal to 0, because since Q is a fictitious force, it doesn't really exist. So if you sub in Q equal to 0 to this equation and to this equation, then these parts just cancel out. The Q parts just cancel out. So that's what these uh, M1s are actually equal to, right here and right here. So that's where that's coming from. And then the partial of M1, which is x over 2, dx, plus 1 over i2, remember from 4 to 10. Remember that the i's are calculated based on the uh, area and size of the metal that we're dealing with. M2 is equal to <coughs> 1200 x minus 100 times x minus 4 squared times x over 2 dx. So now all we have to do is just go ahead and integrate that, which is a fun job. Uh, but I'm going to skip not skip that work and let you do it if you want to. Uh, but E is equal to 30 MSI, or large MSI. So that, for that calculation, so moving on, after the integration, we have Y is equal to 2 over 30 times 6 PSI in order to turn it into the unit that we want, times 200 X cubed all over 0 0.2485, 0 to 4 evaluated from, and then we've got 300 x cubed minus 18.75 x to the fourth plus 150 x to the third plus 150 oops, sorry, plus 357.5 x squared all over 0 0.7854 inches to the fourth integrated from four to ten. And then if you evaluate, wait, do all that math, which we're not going to show here, uh, you find out that y is equal to 0 0.01672 inches. And since it's positive, we know that it's actually acting downward, which is to be expected considering all these forces are acting downward. If you get a negative sign, it's expected to be acting upward, which is a weird part of Castiglione's theorem. But other than that, that's your final answer, and you now have the displacement of uh, this little part that we have up here. So, there you go.